This is Michael Popak, and it must be Legal AF After Dark. MAGA Congress has finally woken up and decided maybe they should try to pass a resolution to completely invalidate all several years of work by the Jan 6 committee. And, and make sure everybody knows that what happened on Jan 6, which was the attack of our capital by insurrection, it wasn't an insurrection at all. It was just a, a tour uh, that had gone uh, slightly awry uh, or something like that. And, it, and the capital is not the temple of our democracy. Yeah, that's partisan words. And we should be able to vacate the contempt proceedings and vacate the subpoenas. And maybe Steve Bannon doesn't have to really go to jail in July. Or does he? We break it all down for you with this new crazy resolution by MAGA Congress. One place on the dial. Legal AF on the Midas Touch Network. Take a listen. Firstly, let's talk about um, what Burleson, Massey, and Biggs are trying to do, obviously, at Donald Trump's command in order to try to overturn the entire findings of the Jan 6 committee and vacate their subpoenas and therefore, I guess, attempt to do something towards the uh, contempt findings. Now, look, um, a bunch of people got subpoenas. Most, uh, the, the vast majority of people complied with their subpoena to both provide documents and to testify to the committee. None of the MAGA Congress people who were all part of the Trump attempt to overturn democracy at various stages and you know whether it was involvement with the fake electors like andy biggs or opening the door and letting some of them in a few days early to let the jan sixers case the joint um or any of that stuff and so you know the jan six committee wanted to get to the bottom of the rumors um and the theory that there were there were it was an inside job in a way none of the maga congress testified uh and all ignored their subpoenas now because of various traditions and norms within Congress. They didn't refer them to the Department of Justice. So Andy Biggs got away scot-free, um, so to speak. But the um, the others, you know, Meadows, Scavino, uh, Bannon, Navarro. Navarro is in jail right now. <laughs> I mean, there's not much you can do for that guy. Uh, they're not going to, you know, withdraw. What are they going to do? Withdraw the subpoena? And there, somebody's going to move to vacate his sentence and commute it and whatever. He's wrapping it up in Miami. Donald Trump's one of his primary visitors. You know, you know, pick up the phone. You know, like put your hand on the glass. That's what they're doing. And Bannon's about to do that too. He's about to go. And he looks like he's he's like loving it because he's 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 with Trump like in campaign rallies and you know he's going to be the podcaster in jail in chief and heading into jail. So, I, what did you make of this? resolution and then which is never going to pass and if it passes it'll never be turned into a law uh, but, but what do you think it says for future congressional investigations um whether you like that congress or not and its power of the subpoena i mean that resolution you know it basically it wants to call the jan 6 select committee you know the I I illegitimate and in addition to in, in addition to the subpoenas, they want to basically dismantle anything that existed from the Jan 6 committee. And, and you know, it's interesting because I, I thought a lot about this thinking, okay, let's say they did get it to pass. And let's say they essentially, let, let, let's back up a minute. So Congress has the power to subpoena someone to appear before them. And the, and the Jan 6 select committee had that authority. And so they subpoenaed various people who came in and testified before them. And as you pointed out, there were several who refused. And what Congress then does is they decide whether or not to make a, a criminal referral to the Department of Justice. And only the Department of Justice gets to decide whether or not there's enough evidence to bring criminal charges or not. So Mark Meadows, for example, who partially complied with the subpoena, but not fully supplied or, or complied, I should say. I think he I think he gave some documents over, but maybe he didn't he didn't want to testify. There was some I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a partial compliance. The Department of Justice decided not to prosecute him uh, because prosecutors won't bring cases that they don't think they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. So there, I think the partial compliance 
um, made them pause. However, with, as you pointed out, Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon, who basically gave them the finger and said, we're not complying at all, the Department of Justice decided to prosecute those and they were both convicted. And so, uh, and so that's what's going on. I also read that Steve Bannon was hoping to serve his time in one of these camps, you know, that are notoriously much nicer and easier than, um, than some of the federal, other federal prisoners or prisons, I should say. And, um, and these camps are where some of the white collar people go. And uh, I heard that he's not eligible for a camp because he has, uh, he has, state, he, he has, yeah, exactly. He has a pending criminal state case um, here in New York. So <laughs> we, yeah, we so, used to call those back in the day, although people, only our generation will know what I'm referencing. You will. They used to call those club fed. Yes, exactly. Because, because there used to be a cha- are, are club meds still around? Yes. I'll ask that for the chart. Is that are they around still? Yeah, I, I yeah, club meds still around. Club med. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So so um yeah, so you know, but I so I started thinking, so what would happen if they passed this resolution that made these subpoenas kind of nullified the subpoenas, made them no longer exist existing. Would that matter to the prosecution? I don't think it does. I, I think the, the prosecution stands alone because it was a valid subpoena at the time. They refused at the time. You, you know, you can call it back after the fact, even though it will never pass, like you said, but I, in my head, I just was going through the you know, the, the mental exercise of what that would be like. I, I don't think it does. And, and I analogize to a crime uh, resisting arrest, which is um, uh, a crime in New York where if somebody physically resists arrest, like, you know, um, just refuses to be arrested and then physically maneuvers their body in such a way that they are trying to either get away or refuse to you know move their hands away to be handcuffed that kind of thing <coughs> um resisting arrest if you prosecute someone for resisting arrest um and 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 often uh prosecutors do that like when when there's like a the police get injured or something like that you know that that when it's really egregious that's when they they usually prosecute those and 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 if you prosecute someone for resisting arrest but the uh arrest is either either like say um they were being arrested for some other crime and and that crime it turns out they weren't guilty of for whatever reason, there wasn't enough evidence, or or, or they, they uh, prosecutors decided not to bring that charge, or um, if the arrest itself was somehow, like I said, the case went away, the resisting still stands. So, I, I, to me, this is sort of similar, but who knows? Who knows? I, I don't know how anything works, but I think the case would still um, would still stand. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that. Um... This is all uh, show theater. This is all um, this is all kabuki theater for Donald Trump, so he can have something to talk about on the campaign trail when he tries to string two sentences together. And it just, but it just shows me the depravity and the moral moral hollowness and hollowing out of the Republican Party and the MAGA Party that they would even think to do this to try to discredit um, the hard work and courage of the Jan 6 committee led by a vice chairman that was part of their party that they of course eventually admonished and censured and Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger um, and it and it it besperch, it besperch, mis, I'll try it again it it sullies the name <laughs> of those that died on that hill literally on Capitol Hill including Metro Police and Capitol Police and others and those that still suffer from the psychological scars of what was one of the Capitol Police referred to as reminiscent of her time in Fallujah. Um, in the, and she said particularly the blood splattered steps of the Capitol. For those that now say with revisionist history and some sort of rose colored glasses that this was effectively just a Capitol tour gone awry and, and there's just hours and hours of people doing nothing or peaceful, right. So don't focus on that. Focus on the bloody combat medieval style at the West Terrace and at the stairs 
and uh, the battle that raged for the soul of our democracy against an outmatched capital and metro police not reinforced by the National Guard, uh, because who was going to call them out? The president certainly wasn't at the time going to do that, or anybody else. And 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 then when the line wouldn't hold, that now chilling comment from one of the Capitol Police, the line is not holding, meaning these this teeming band of insurrectionists were going to start pouring in and did pour into the Capitol with murderous cries, right, and um, with bent on assassination. I don't want to even think what would have happened had that had this fomented mob whipped up by Donald Trump armed, many of them armed, despite what some of these sponsors of this resolution said, had actually gotten their hands on a staffer or an elected official. Um, God forbid Nancy Pelosi, God forbid the rest of them. I mean, they're, I mean, they're all big talkers, and we've seen that in their trials, their convictions, and their sentencings, when they went from from big talkers with their GoPros and their Amer- wrapped in American flags and saying they're going to, you know, where's Nancy and let's hang Nancy and drag her out by her hair and all that. And then they're all blubbering idiots begging for mercy when, you know, when it's time to, 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 to meet their maker in the form of a federal judge. Uh, so I don't really know what they would have done had they actually done it, but, but pushed on with a mob mentality. I can imagine the violence that could have ensued and the grievous harm that would have come to members of Congress. And not only members of Congress, I felt sorry for the poor staff members. They're making like minimum wage, okay? And they're crawling on their belly to try to get to safety while, you know, 15 or 20 Capitol Police outmatched trying to distract them from hanging um, uh, elected officials. And to watch this group of people, starting with Mitch McConnell all the way to this group, here that sponsored this resolution when when they were when they were in it like your colleague on the podcast at the moment and they were and they were looking down the barrel of an angry mob with murderous cries they certainly sung a different tune including on the con- congress floor go back and watch Mitch McConnell uh, talking about Donald Trump and how terrible it was, you'd think the guy would never be elected. Now, all those same people, including one of the sponsors of this resolution, is uh, now saying, well, that well, no, it wasn't an insurrection, and no, there wasn't a violent, no, it wasn't an attack on the temple of our democracy. No, it's too partisan. When did an attack on our capital become partisan? It is partisan, by, by, one, by one wing in particular. Welcome back. Now you know why we call it Legal AF, and if you didn't, Tune in on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and you will. Right here on this YouTube channel. You knew that. You're already here. Free subscribe and help get the 3 million. Help us get the 3 million free subscribers. And then you can pick up the Legal AF podcast, full-length version, with four or five curated stories at the intersection of law and politics we've chosen just for you on all major podcast platforms. If you know about Legal AF, maybe you missed the show, there's a segment, or you know all about the show, but you want to get friends, family, people in your life to know more about us, send that bite-sized version of Legal AF to somebody in your life and ask them to become part of our audience. We really would appreciate you helping us out like that and that you're already a supporter. If you don't know who I am or what I'm talking about, that was Legal AF. I'm Michael Popak. We do it on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on the Midas Touch Network, and then the leaders of Legal AF do hot takes about every hour at that same intersection. No censorship. Nobody censors me. Nobody tells me what to say or my co-anchors. And uh, we don't blow smoke or sunshine. So if you're not already a part of our audience, we invite you to join us Wednesday, Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Until then, I'm Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary. Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.